today, let me actually write this out. It's going to be BTM and ATM essential starting steps. That's going to be the first lesson because no matter what path you choose, we want to make sure you're successful with the foundations. So tune in for that, guys. And then right after that, lesson number two is going to be why saving a loan will not just keep you broke, but it'll make you broke. So you need to pay attention to this lesson, guys. It's what got me out of my specific situations, and it's going to help you out. And then we're going to finish it off last with lesson number three. It's going to be how to double down on BTMs, that is Bitcoin ATMs, to generate over $10,000 a month in revenue, guys. All right, all right, all right, guys. What's going on? It's Gavin Yonis here, COO of ATMTogether.com, the largest ATM automation company in the world, guys. I'm excited. This is another weekly live. Uh, what is it? It's February 21st, 2023. I'm, I'm getting losing track of the time, guys. It's, I mean, look how far we've gone in 2023 already. I mean, I thought like last week was December, but that should tell you time is going by fast, guys. So I want to welcome you to another special edition of this weekly live. If in case you guys didn't know, we've been doing this since 2021, guys. Talk about commitment. That's 52 lives a year. Unless there's an extra day in the year, then it might be 53. So guys, I want you to comment below what city and state you are actually watching from today. And I bring that up for a reason because I got a special announcement I'm going to bring up a little later, but it depends on what city and state you are. So comment below what city and state you are. I'm in Southern California. I'm actually between San Diego and Mexico for all my Mexicanas and Mexicanos over there. So I'm between places, but I want to know exactly where you guys are at. Let's see where you guys are at. A few places. Um, Trevor, I can't even pronounce where you are in Wisconsin. Only in Wisconsin, guys, do we not know how to say their, the names of the cities. Jeff, what's going on? Las Vegas, Troy, Alabama. Awesome, awesome. Okay. New York City. Shout out to New York City. British Columbia, Vancouver. Nice. Okay. That's very cool. We're all the way out in Canada too, guys, in case you guys didn't know. Uh, New York, Roosevelt, San Jose, California. That's actually my hometown. Shout out to all my San Jose fans out there. Let's see what else we got. National City. Awesome. Okay. Southern California and Ohio. Of course, we can't go anywhere without Ohio showing up. California, Temecula. Awesome, guys. Awesome, guys. So we're all over the place, as, as you guys can tell. So with that being said, we are actually pre-recording this for our YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I think those are the two buttons and it's probably going to be like down here, right here. Our video editor is phenomenal. She's going to make it happen. And if you don't know, we actually have a YouTube channel, guys. It's extremely exciting. I think it was like maybe like a month ago. We were at like maybe six subscribers or six followers, whatever you call it. I'm not into social media, guys. I should tell you something. We're probably at like five or 6,000 subscribers now. So that's how fast we're going on the YouTube side. Think about when our Facebook group was only at like 500 people. Now we're at like almost 60,000 members. So if you're not subscribed, you have to subscribe, guys. Don't be left behind. We have phenomenal gems we leave there. We upload some short reels too to make it interesting for you. We're, we're kind of switching it up on you guys, all right? Now, with that being said, it's youtube.com forward slash the at sign and ATM together. Common spelling, ATM together, guys. So make sure you subscribe. With that being said, if you're live, and I know you're live because I see your comments, but if you're live and you're watching this right now, I don't care where you're at. Maybe you're freezing in Colorado or you're sweating in Miami. Make sure you comment live below because it helps us with the algorithms, first of all. But second of all, it helps us know that we are actually reaching the people and you know this is not a pre-recorded webinar like some people do. I'm not going to name some names, but that's how it is. But if you're watching a replay, which is okay, it's okay. We're not going to blame you because life happens. People get busy. Sometimes you can't make this live. We will comment if you comment later in this live. So make sure you comment replay. If you're watching this, whether it's a week from now, a year from now, I literally just saw a comment like 11 months later from one of my lives forming the LLC. And they're like, get them, send me the guide. I'm like, I got you. 11 months later, it's all good. Once they commented replay, I knew what time of day it was, all right? So with that being said, guys, we got a few announcements. So let me try to pull all these up. Hold on a second. That should tell you something. We basically have like a manuscript we pull up that has all of our announcements. So on March 6th, we're actually going to be on a pretty decently sized podcast. And I say decent because they have 
I mean, a million subscribers. So they have a decent amount of reach. Okay. So it's going to be called fresh and fit guys, fresh and fit. And what that means is we're going to be reaching out to the people. And if you guys didn't know the last time we were on that podcast, I mean, the Facebook group got flooded. All the OGs in the group were like, Hey man, get these newcomers out of here. Right. That's how many people came in because you got to think to yourself, if a million people are going to be watching, we're going to be on there dropping gems about the ATM and BTM business, entrepreneurship, everything you guys can think of. So if you're excited and you want us to cover a specific topic, because we're all about the people, guys, I keep saying that for a reason. If you want us to actually step, talk about a specific topic, comment below what you want us to talk about. What I wanted to cover was entrepreneurship, some law enforcement stories, some military stories, because everyone keeps asking me about that for some reason. Like, hey, get them. Tell me about the Marine Corps. But some stories like that. But if there's some specific topic you want us to reach out to a million people about, whether it's a nonprofit, whether it's about your job or what you like for lunch, I don't care what it is, guys. Comment below. I will take it into consideration. If it's cool, I'm like, you know what? I can add some value to that. I will talk about that live, guys, right? And that's going to be on March 6th, which is the first Monday of March, guys. It's called Money Mondays, Fresh and Fit on YouTube. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be me, Paul. We have a special guest coming on too that's going to talk about some funny things. I'm going to leave it like that. I won't, I won't steal his thunder, all right? So with that being said, guys, I told you to comment below the city and state you're from. And the reason why is because I was actually talking to our location finder team, right? And this is the same team that's found us over, I think it's like 2,800, 2800 locations nationwide, including Canada for all my Canadians or Canadians or whatever you guys call yourselves. No offense, but there's always a different way to say it. So we actually have some phenomenal spots for Bitcoin ATM locations this month, guys, right? So let me read this off because there was a few of them and I, I had to cut it down. I was like, there's too many locations. So we got Chicago, and, and just, just so you guys know, if you're in one of these cities I mentioned, or one of these areas, make sure you comment premium below, just so we know, and we can even reach out to you if you want. So Chicago, Southern California, Philadelphia, Detroit, Houston, and of course, right, because you can't say Houston without DFW, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So if you're in one of those areas, interested, Premium BTM locations. Make sure you comment premium below. We'll reach out to you, give you some info. If you're interested, cool. If not, no worries at all. And lastly, guys, lastly, we got something very important. And I'm going to actually share my screen for this one right here. So as you know, we're all about giving. And it doesn't need to be Thanksgiving when we do this. So what we have is an actual ATM Together raffle. And just so you guys know, it's the last week. Take a second to think about that. It's the last week, guys, to enter into our ATM Together raffle. This is extremely exciting. And here's the reason why. We're literally giving away multiple ATMs. Even Paul had asked me, he's like, hey, how many ATMs are you giving away? Like, my bad, I actually added another one, right? That's just how we do over here sometimes. We switch it up. So the first prize for this automation raffle giveaway, guys, it's phenomenal because we've had plenty of winners. I think we've had like six in the past. So there's ATMs flowing around all over the U.S. right now. So the first prize, if you're the first winner, because there's multiple prizes, it's going to be a full automation package. And I'm talking about everything. That's a full turnkey business. That's support. That's actually, I mean, I got to move the mic out of the way to tell you everything. So that's going to be full support. That's a premium location for your actual ATM, a brand new ATM included, all this, everything you need from start to finish to get your ATM business up and running. That's prize number one. Prize number two, guys, is, I mean, I like it too. It's going to be a brand new Hyusung Halo 2 ATM. That is like, I'm, I'm talking top of the line, guys. I'm talking brand new, straight from the manufacturer, all the bells and whistles, has all the capabilities. It's nice and shiny, angle top, so no one can put their beer on top because you're going to get a profitable location. They're probably going to be drinking there, so you don't want your, your actual drinks on that ATM. In addition to that, guys, it's going to be support for that ATM because we can't give you anything without support. The first thing in life and in business is always the best support, and that's what we have. So it's going to be a brand new Hyusung Halo 2, top of the line, phenomenal value. I think it's like $2,800 value. That's going to be prize number two. Prize number three, guys, is going to be even better. It's a location because, as you know, in business, 
Finding a location for your business is one of the hardest things you can do, guys. Okay. So what that means is you're going to have a premium and, you know, we were going to limit it to ATMs, but if you're interested in BTMs, we'll even swap that for a BTM location, guys, because we're all about good business. So if you are winner number three, you're going to get a premium location found by our one and only location finder team. They are excellent. And speaking of which, guys, if you know you're going to be the winner for this, because I want to show you how to enter. But if you know, without even knowing the requirements that you're going to be the winner, I want you to comment winner below. That's you right there. You watching this. I don't care if you're driving. You better pull over on the shoulder. Comment winner below because we need to know who's serious about actually winning some of these prizes because it's super simple requirements, guys. And let me actually share my screen to show you how this works. Share the audio. Here, these are the requirements, guys. Real simple. All you need to do, that number, actually, these are the winners. So all you got to do is share this reel. This is on either my Instagram or Paul's Instagram. And please make sure you check the selling. So right over here, you notice this. Paul, Alex, and Mendoza are at Get Em Why. Those are the Instagrams. There are like hundreds of fakes out there, which means we finally made it. But what that means is you need you need to actually follow this page. Go to our Instagram. Share this. Just retag it. So all you got to do is take a photo of this. Share it to your story. Then you're going to take a screenshot of that, and you're literally just going to enter it in right here, guys. Real simple. So step one, guys, go to our Instagram. See this right here. Take a screenshot and send it to this form, and that's it. And on February 28th, which is the last Tuesday of February, guys, that is when we're going to announce not just the winner, but the winners, meaning plural, guys. So it's going to be extremely exciting. If you know you're going to be the winner, make sure you check this out. It's super simple. It's on our Instagram. Just look it up. If you need help, comment winner below. We will reach out, and we'll tell you exactly how to win this, guys. So it's going to be phenomenal, all right? So now let's get to it, guys, because I don't want to run out of time. So... Our agenda today is going to be actually phenomenal. I'm actually pretty excited because we have a very special live, very special training, and it's going to be good for you guys, right? So today, let me actually write this out. It's going to be BTM and ATM essential starting steps. That's going to be the first lesson because no matter what path you choose, we want to make sure you're successful with the foundations. So tune in for that, guys. And then right after that, lesson number two is going to be why saving alone will not just keep you broke, but it'll make you broke. So you need to pay attention to this lesson, guys. It's what got me out of my specific situations, and it's going to help you out. And then we're going to finish it off last with lesson number three. It's going to be how to double down on BTMs, that is Bitcoin ATMs, to generate over $10,000 a month in revenue, guys. All right? So it's going to be phenomenal training. So with that being said, guys, like I mentioned, we are pre-recording this for YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe and like button because we're going to have some more content. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you check out our YouTube channel, guys, because we're going to have some good content on there, all right? So with that being said, let me get ready for this first lesson, right? I got to pull up my screen, guys, because I have a lot of things going on. There's like a 50 a 50 inch monitor behind you guys and a big screen behind that. So sometimes there's a, a lot of notifications going on behind the scenes, right? So let's do this. All right. All right. So now BTM and ATM essential starting steps guys. All right. And you know, I'm not, I'm not really seeing that much engagement in the, in the audience guys. And if we don't have engagement, that means no one else is going to be able to see this, which is unfair. And I know you, I mean, I know you want to start your business yourself, but there's enough money out there for everybody, guys. Trust me. That's the first thing I learned in business. So let's do this, okay? We're so much so about giving out free stuff that we actually have two free guides. Not just one, but two phenomenal guides. Now, one of those guides is actually for cash ATMs, meaning that if you want the starting steps to start your cash ATM business on your own, I want you to comment cash below. You know what? No, comment cash money. Cash money if you want the free guide for cash ATMs. Now, if you're interested in Bitcoin ATMs, which I'm going to go into in a second, I want you to comment BTM. That's B like Bravo, T like Tom, M like Mary. That's like phonetic alphabet. And if you're in the military, it's a different one. So if you're interested in our cash ATM guide, make sure you comment cash. But if you're interested in our Bitcoin ATM guide, then comment BTM below, guys. I want to see some comments. I got to see some engagement because I, I mean... I, I spent 
a week preparing this lesson, guys. Let's see. And if you want both, you know what? Just comment both, all right? Just comment both. We'll send everything to you, all right? We'll just, we'll just send it all, guys. It'll be this big zip file. It's going to carry all of our free guides, all right? Ow. Let's do this, guys. So it kind of it kind of sucks. I hate bringing this, this story up. Some people always ask me because they ask me about business. And they ask me about, I guess you say, success and how, what it took to get there. Okay. So I'll go a little bit into myself a little later in another lesson, but let me break down a little something. So I wasn't always in this position, guys. I actually failed in a lot of businesses. One example of this business was actually a retail storefront. And I say retail, guys. So Young Getum was uh, saving a lot of money at work. So I thought to myself, man, I just need to invest, 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 which is, which is a great mentality. It was a starting step. But I didn't take the foundation seriously in my business. And what I mean by this is this. So invested with a friend into a business, a retail storefront. And lo and behold, it wasn't the best idea. And it wasn't the concept itself. That's like kind of like saying, hey, you know what? I want to invest in rental properties and you don't do well. It's like, well, no, it's not the rental properties themselves that aren't well. It's possibly the way you execute it or maybe your vision of the business. So with that being said, invested into a retail storefront. What that means is like literally, you know, when you walk down the street or you go to a mall, that storefront, like you go to Gap. I, I brought up Gap, man. I'm dating myself. You go to Gap, you go to Macy's, Nordstrom's, whatever. All right. That's a storefront. So I actually start, opened up a storefront, and this was in San Francisco, California, guys. So if you know anything about San Francisco, it's pretty expensive. And I'm talking about, I mean, you're looking at rent in San Francisco for a storefront, for a small place. You're looking at about $6,500 a month, right? $6,500. That's just for the storefront. And then they have this thing called triple net where you're responsible for everything. Meaning that anything happens, you're responsible for it. You need to patch a hole in the wall. They, you get charged hourly, guys. It's expensive. So we jumped headfirst into this thing. Didn't do any research, which I'll go into later. We didn't do our due diligence. And also, we also didn't decide to execute properly. We just said, hey, you know what? We'll just figure it out. Well, I'm going to tell you guys right now. That doesn't really work. And that's why we're breaking up, breaking down the lessons of these businesses, because you have to understand the foundations so you can plan before you execute. So what happened was this. I invested a sizable amount, right? We're talking about fifty dollars to $100,000, guys, in the business. And this was just operating expenses, meaning that it was to buy product. But what happened was the money was misallocated, right? We started looking for the shiny thing. We started looking for things that don't matter, which is the number one lesson in business, is you want to stay revenue driven. So we started buying things that did not matter. I'm talking nice, freaking nice furniture. Uh, I mean, we started buying nice sodas for the clients, which really didn't matter. All these unnecessary expenses. But one day, literally walked into the storefront and guess what I realized? We literally had no inventory. You walked into this, imagine this, right? You go into this, it, the best example is this. You go to a really nice house, beautiful you walk in and there's no furniture and you're like, what the, like you go to the backyard. There's this beautiful pool. I'm talking about like gorgeous, but there's no water in it. You're like, this doesn't make any sense. Like what's the plan here? And that's what happened with the storefront. So guess what happened? We weren't profiting month. Number one, month, number two, month, number three, month, number, it just keeps going. So eventually lost the investment guys. And the reason why was because I didn't start with the foundation. I didn't pay attention to what actually matters. And that's why you need to pay attention to this lesson guys. All right. And the reason why I bring this up is because in the ATM business, because I'm going to go into the ATM business first, you have to have your foundations. We call it the four pillars. Okay. So the first thing you need is your LLC guys. That stands for your limited liability company or limited liability corporation whatever you want to call it, guys, your LLC and your EIN, two separate things. Okay. So let me break down exactly how that works. And in case you guys want to guide on this, because we're all about guides, that's how you know we're in government employment. I was actually in the Marine Corps. If you're in the military, shout out to all my veterans, but you know, we have a guide for everything. It don't matter what it is. So if you want a free guide on how to actually step-by-step -step form your LLC, so that way you can take notes now and you can refer to that later, comment LLC below. We'll send you a copy of that. I actually created it myself. There's also another video, secret training video. We might send you that too, but comment LLC below guys. All right. Now, with that being said, your LLC, 
That is one of the most important aspects of your business, let alone your ATM business, because the ATM business is considered a high risk business, guys. And when I talk about the banks in a second, I'll break that down. Why? So what you want to do is focus on the revenue driven aspects. So when it comes to the LLC, just follow these steps, guys. Just keep it simple. The first thing you want to do is form with your home address, because what's happening in this year and in the upcoming years there are a lot of people using different services for filing and they're running to issues with the banks, guys. So the easiest way and the fastest and cheapest way, because I'm all about saving you money because a penny saved is a penny earned, right, guys? So you want to form at your house. You need to know who's going to be a part of your business, whether it's going to be your mother, your grandmother, your dog, your, your, your hermit or your hamster, whatever it is, guys. Know who is going to be a part of the business before you actually form that, okay? I actually recommend filing online because that's going to be the fastest, one of the faster services that we actually use and I've used for multiple businesses, including this new business we just launched is actually ink file. And here's the reason why guys, you got to practice what you preach. How many of you guys have seen those, those gurus online? And these are the same gurus that screw, screwed a lot of people in the ATM business. You'll see them in a lot of other Facebook groups, guys. Well, you're going to see these gurus that don't practice what they preach. Meaning that they say, Hey, you should do this, but don't look at me because I'm not doing it. Well, when it comes down to it, there's a reason why when we start a business, that's when we actually talk about it. Not in theory, not this hypothetical that you learn in college. No, no, we're action takers and decision makers. So what we use is inkfile.com. We are not associated with them whatsoever, but they've been fast. They're pretty quick and pretty simple. So that's I-N-C-F-I-L-E.com. I'll actually comment that below. Here we go. I just saw a comment. This threw me off. Send cash money. I was like, who's sending cash money, guys? All right. So you're going to want to focus on uh, ink file, guys. That's going to be the easiest way to form. Now, what you're going to need is the NAICS code for the ATM business. The reason I bring this up is because, and just so you guys know what the NAICS code is, guys, that's just a classification code for your business. So the reason I bring this up is because it's one of the hardest things to find out. I literally just got a message in my DMs the other day. And the first thing they said was, hey, man, like, what's the NAICS code? I'm confused. And I, I mean, I've had 50 trainings on this, guys, but to beat the point down, one of our clients before, they made the mistake of filing with another company, right? That we're not associated with either, but they told me the story. They said, hey, get them. Can you just tell me the NAICS code? I'll even pay you. And I said, well, why would I pay, charge you for the NAICS code? It's literally free info. He's like, well, I literally just spent $850 for this independent filing service. And they spoke to their attorney. They spoke to their CPA. They're just in arguments all day. They can't figure out what it is. And I thought to myself, I was like, what service are you using? And they start with a Z. I'm not even, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say their names, right? I don't need that smoke or that drama, as they say. But he said, they can't figure it out. Well, the NAICS code, guys, for the ATM business is 522320. Again, that's 522320, guys. Write that down. You know, in fact, comment that below just so it's memorialized for you guys so you can search the transcripts. The reason I bring this up is because you need to properly classify your business because when you open that bank account, which is this lesson number two, the second step of your ATM business, they want to make sure your paperwork's tight. And here's the thing. Finding a bank for the ATM business in 2023 is nearly impossible. Because there have been some bad actors in the space. There have been some gurus. So when you're opening your bank account, guys, you have to remember the ATM business requires a specific type of bank account. You're not a money service business, but you are considered a high risk business. And why is that? Well, here's the reason why. You are dealing with cash. You are dealing with cash, guys. Think about that. So what do they think? That banker's thinking Sicario. They're thinking what? What are they thinking? Ozark. How many of you guys have seen Ozark? They're thinking money laundering. They don't know that you work a nine to five. They don't know that you have a family. They don't know you have other investments. They just know, oh, wow, this person's opening an ATM business. They must be into some crazy stuff because other people have created a bad reputation for you. Recently in Southern California of all places, the reason why it's so hard to get a bank was because there was an incident. Some guy was, I don't know what they're thinking. They thought they were Ozark season eight. And they got caught, guys. So that decide, made the other banks decide they didn't want to open an actual cash ATM business accounts. So when it comes down to the ATM business, guys, excuse me, when it comes down to the ATM business, you want to make sure you open a business checking account. 
How many guys would want to know exactly how I would call to find out if a bank would open your account for you? Comment script below. If you're interested, because I have a proven script that works for me, that's worked for hundreds of people to cold call these banks to find one that works. Comment script below. And if I get enough comments, I might drop this down for you guys, right? Let's see. Only one comment. Come on, guys. There's, I know there's more people watching. Comment script below. Let's see. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm seeing the momentum, guys. All right. So this is exactly what I do, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like I'm the bank and then I'm the teller, right? So you're going to call that bank and that bank's going to pick up. And they're like, hey, you know, blah, 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 savings trust. Hey, this is uh, get them. I was actually calling to open a business checking account. And what is that person going to say? Okay, cool. What kind of business? Well, I'll actually have an ATM business and I'm looking to collect my commissions for my ATM accounts. This is what's going to happen on the other side. Okay, what do you mean by ATM business? <laughs> so if you get a response like that, guess what that means? Go to that bank. Go to that bank in person. The only banks you don't want to go to is if they give you a hard no. And what that means is they say, absolutely not. We don't deal with ATM accounts. If there's a maybe or if there's a yes, guys, you need to go to that bank to open an account. Because here's the thing. They may decide to change their mind a month later. You may be the one client they let in. You might be the first ATM account they have. And you could set the standard for every single person else that wants to open their account there. So go to that bank. Again, guys, when you're calling them, it's going to be a conversation, have confidence. But what you're going to ask them is to open a business checking account to collect your commissions from your ATM business. That's it, guys. Keep it simple. If there's a lot more questions, go in person. Because here's the thing. They're going to have their own preconceived notions. And then you're going to go to phase two, which is going in person to the bank, guys. So pay attention. Pay attention right now. This is the most important aspect. I'm telling you, sales. This is stuff that is worth ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to learn. All right? This is business relationships. And I'm telling you from running multi-million dollar businesses that are based out of multiple countries. When you go to the bank, these are things you need to remember. You want to have all your paperwork. You must have all your paperwork, guys. And here's the reason why. If you don't have all your paperwork, do you look professional? They're going to judge you. That It is what it is. Straight up, they're going to judge you when you go to that bank. So you want to have all your paperwork and you want to look presentable. Here's a hard reality, guys. What I do when I go to the bank, I'm going to shave. I'm going to shave everything. I'm not going to have one piece of hair on me, just like the Marine Corps, just like Marine Corps boot camp. I shave everything. I'm going to wear a suit or at least something business professional because nowadays I know, I know people are wearing suits without socks and that's a new style, right? So make sure you look presentable. That's the lesson. You don't got to wear a suit, but you want to have all your paperwork. You want to look presentable, but you want to know what you're talking about, which is number three, okay? So you want to understand that an ATM business is not a money service business. And I bring this up for a reason. I was recently at Chase, and I can bring this up because they don't open ATM accounts. I even try to leverage a relationship to be like, hey, I want to open it nationwide. Nope. You need to know what you're talking about because this banker who only deals with specific clientele did not know about the ATM business. I said, hey, you know what? Can we open an ATM business checking account? Just joking around. He's like, well, yeah, possibly. I'm like, so you're, you're sure it can, right? Yeah, yeah, we possibly can. I was like, okay, cool. I just, I just stopped. Chase said no to those accounts. He's like, well, let me double check. He walks to the back, comes back. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I can't open a business checking account. So you got to know what you're talking about. So big banks aren't going to work with ATM accounts. So you're looking at like Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. 99% of the time, they're going to say no. The only time they say yes, guys, I'm just throwing gems out here for you. The only times they say yes, because they can say yes, is if you own the business that you're going to place your ATM at. So what does that mean? What that means is, because I don't want to run out of time, guys. We're actually going way over. So if you own the business, your ATM is at. So if you own a laundromat, if you own a barbershop, whatever it is, and you want to place an ATM within your own business, more than likely, those big name banks will open for you. Because the problem is source of funds. From their perspective, they're more worried about where that cash is coming from. 
They don't know you're using your hard-earned money to invest in the business. They just know the stack of cash is coming somewhere. It's going to that machine, and they just keep thinking about Netflix, Ozark, season six. So with that being said, guys, when it comes to the bank, just a quick recap. You want to have three things. What is it? You want to have all your paperwork. You want to look presentable, and you want to know what you're talking about. Now, the next part, because I have to brush through this, guys, for your ATM business is going to be your processor and your ATM. So in the ATM business, there's this thing called the processing network, right? You're going to have a processor. All that is, think of it like this. It's a network that connects your ATM to the customer to your bank account. That's it. So best example, on Monday, customer A goes to your ATM. They pull out, we'll say, 20 bucks in cash, okay? That cash inside that ATM is yours. You're going to charge them a fee. You're charging them for convenience, which is extremely important to remember. The fact that you're charging them for convenience for access to their cash. Now, that fee plus the money they withdrew should come back to your bank account the very next day. If it's not, that means you're probably not dealing with the best processing. When you choose processors, it's like choosing cell phone service. It's like going AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, whatever, right? Boost Mobile, don't matter. But you want to choose the best deal possible. In the ATM business, write this down, guys. The best deal is this. I'm, I'm telling you the secrets right now. I'm basically, I feel like I own a dealership and I'm saying, hey, this is how you get the cheapest car, all right? First of all, you need to have free processing. It needs to be absolutely free. You should keep all your profits, guys. There's absolutely no reason you don't keep your profits. Second of all, there needs to be no contract. No contract. How many guys got cell phone service lately? I literally just signed up for Verizon. They don't offer contracts anymore because they know the new age and you guys are way more educated and smart. They know we can't do contracts anymore. No one falls for it. Back in the day, that happened to Paul and a few of my friends. Don't fall for it. So you have what? Free processing where you keep all your profits. You have no contracts and you have phenomenal customer service. But here's the thing. I don't even call it customer service. It's client service because you're their client. They should be working for your business. Here at ATM Together, we actually process with our processor, Mike Sandone, High Country ATM. The reason why is because he has provided phenomenal service available to all of our clients 24-7. No one has anything but good things to say for him. And he's been in the business for years. He has over 120 ATMs nationwide. So that should tell you something right? So those are three things when it comes to your processing network. Then you need your ATM. You want to make sure it's brand new, guys. Here's the thing. When, there's a saying in the ATM business, when you're new, buy brand new. And the reason why is because you don't know what's going on with that ATM, right? So make sure you buy brand new, guys. That's all I got for that. And then of course, the location, make sure it's cash driven. You want to look for foot traffic. You want to look for the need for cash at that business. The key aspects of them are making sure it's cash driven guys, all right? So that's it for cash ATMs, guys. We need to get into the BTM business. I'm literally way over time. I'm getting messages on, on all, all two of my phones saying, hey, hurry up, hurry up. You're running out of time, all right? <laughs> now guys, if you're excited, to learn because I, I dropped some gems when it comes to the cash ATM business. That's literally an entire, like if that was like a one-on-one -on -one consultation with like a professional consulting service, that's what you would get. Now I want to do the same thing for you for BTM. So if you're excited, because I know a lot of you came for Bitcoin ATM information because there's not much out there and there's a lot of things going on in crypto right now. If you looked at Bitcoin prices, I think we're at like 24,000 or 25,000. And if you remember what was I saying in December of 2022 when Bitcoin was at $16,000? You remember that? I said, guys, you need to invest in Bitcoin ATMs right now because the price is going to rise on Bitcoin. And guess what happened? I don't even track the Bitcoin price. I don't even care. I could care less if it goes up or down because that's how you make money in the business, which is what I'm about to get it to. So if you're excited to learn about Bitcoin ATMs, comment, teach me. Comment, teach me, because I'm going to give you the guidance, guys. Listen, I'm going to come close. I'm going to come close. I will give you the guidance for the Bitcoin ATM business, guys. Comment below. I want to see who actually wants to learn about this industry. That's very exciting. But see, man, not even one comment. Nobody wants to learn. Okay. All right. I see a few coming in. There's a delay, man. I got concerned for a second. I was like, how do you guys not want to learn about a Bitcoin ATM business? So as you guys can tell, I get excited. When it comes to Bitcoin ATMs, here's the reason why. Get them back in the day was a cop. The way I heard about Bitcoin ATMs was very exciting to me. So back in the day, 
back in 2016, I actually invested in crypto. I actually learned about Bitcoin. Um, back then, Bitcoin was about, it was like 500 to 600. It was, it was going around 600 bucks. And that was like the high price was $600 for one Bitcoin. That's when I heard about it. And I was like, I'm way too late. I'm, I hate my life. I hate this. How did I hear about this so late? 2016, the world has passed me up. Bitcoin is $600. So as you can imagine, I invested a decent amount of money in crypto. All right. So I went down the rabbit hole. I've been holding crypto since 2016. That is seven years now. Seven years. Think about that for a second. That's a long-term investment. Now, that should tell you I truly believe in crypto. All right. I'm not here saying, hey, guys, make sure you buy this crypto and all that. Honestly, I don't even care if you invest in it. But what I always told people, especially if they're doubtful of crypto, was this. If you are doubtful of crypto, invest in the industry around it, the traditional things you're comfortable with. Why do I say that? Well, in this business, you got to remember that it's not just the industry itself, but there's things around it. So say, for example, you want to invest in oil. What can you do? You can invest in 24-7 diners around oil fields because what? They work 24-7 shifts. They want to eat. You can invest in gas stations. You can invest in daycare. You see how there's industries around it. So when, if you're interested in crypto, but you're, you're maybe you're a little weary, what you can invest in is what? Industries around it. So back in the day, I say back in the day, it's like two years ago, you can invest in like graphics cards because you know people want to mine crypto. Or you can invest it in different stocks that have, inv that have exposure to it. Well, one of the hidden investments was actually Bitcoin ATMs. And here's the reason why, guys. So I actually found out about Bitcoin ATMs a funny way. So I looked into it before. And the reason why I found out was because a three-letter agency, federal agency, was in the city I was working in. And they were talking about this Bitcoin ATM. I was like, what? What's going on? And the reason why they're talking about it was because the person who owned it was making so much money. Back then, it was kind of... There's no like tax law on crypto. So they're just like, nah, I'm not even going to report this. I mean, I'm sure there's no reason I have to. So they're making like thirty to $50,000 a month from like one machine. Think about that. thirty to $50,000 in profit from one machine. So of course, Uncle Sam was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't make that much money and not tell us about it. There, somehow, somewhere we're going to find a law. So of course, person got in trouble, right? So that should tell you something. I went down the rabbit hole and I realized how hard it was because I did all this research, guys. So let me break down exactly what it is you need to start your Bitcoin ATM business, guys, right? So the first thing you're going to need, of course, is your LLC. Like I mentioned with cash ATMs, you want to make sure you have an actual LLC. The reason why is, first of all, you're going to make in profits. It protects your business. But in addition to that, when you're opening your business checking account, you look more professional. And when you're finding those locations, people are going to treat you more serious. Because if Getem goes to a location to find it, guess what? Not going to be as interested. They're like, all right, Getem, we'll, we'll talk to you next week. But if Getem's Investments Enterprises LLC goes, they're like, okay, how big is this company? You're faking the funk. It's a Fugazi guy sometimes, right? But at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do to succeed because winners aren't born overnight. They're made, all right? Now, with that being said, you want to have your LLC, then you want to have your business checking account because you need somewhere to receive all your profits. And then once you start getting business credit cards or getting business credit, it expands from your business and you get tax deductions, okay? And I'll actually get into that in a second. Then you want to make sure you have your machine. And what I mean by that is this, guys. So when it comes to the Bitcoin ATM business, you want to have what's called a two-way machine, meaning that somebody can buy and sell crypto on your machine. Here's the reason why. Someone's going to go to your machine and they're going to buy crypto, meaning that they're going to put cash inside the machine. You're going to charge them a percentage, typically about 15 to 20%. All right? So... 15 to 20% for that actual purchase. So somebody goes in there, they put $1,000 in cash. They get charged by you. Man, this is, I still am bewildered sometimes that we're able to do this, but you, they get charged by you. We'll say 15%. That means you made $150 off that transaction. Where's that money going to go? It's got to go to your business checking account. You don't want that going to your personal checking account because you want to keep things separate. Okay. But I bring this up for a reason, guys. You want to have a buy and sell machine because somebody might want to go to your machine and sell crypto. So what does that mean? They're going to want to go to your machine. They're literally going to go there. They're going to scan a QR code and guess what? They're going to get cash out of the machine and you're charging them for that too. Why is that so important? Here's the reason why. What happens when crypto prices go up? 
people buy and people sell. Why? Because you have the people that bought lower. They want to sell quickly. They want cash. And then you have the people that what? They want to quickly buy because maybe the exchanges are backed up. Maybe there's something going on online. Or maybe they just don't have access to a bank account. So what do they want to do? They want to go to your machine to use it. So you're profiting off of either way. So make sure you have a buy and sell machine, guys. It's extremely important. The majority of machines are buy only. They're going to get outdated. Think about your cards. You know your debit card? What happened recently? They changed it from the magnetic swipe to what? The chip. Because industry is always evolving, guys. And you want to evolve with them. But you want to stay ahead of the curve. Imagine, say it's 2023, which it is. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to get the iPod Touch. And no knock to my iPod Touch fans out there because I still got mine. It has a cracked screen. I can't get a replacement screen. But you're going to be behind the times. It's not going to connect to your car. It's not going to connect to your laptop. The plug's not going to work. Think about it. So you want to stay ahead of the curve and you want to think ahead of the industry. That's why you want to buy and sell machine. Then the third thing you're going to do, because there's five requirements, guys. The third thing you want to do is going to want to find a profitable location. This is extremely important in the business, guys, because when it comes down to it, your location can make or break your business. It's in addition to marketing and a few other things. But if your location's in Alaska, let's keep it real. I mean, maybe if you're the only location there, you probably do well, but you might have some issues. Okay. So you want to make sure you find a good location and place your BTM. Typically, they're actually next to cash ATMs, which I get into in another lesson, guys. That's actually going to be on there next week. But there's a way to complement your cash ATM business with your Bitcoin ATM business. All right. Then the fourth thing you're going to need is cash management. Here's the reason why, guys. And you know what? Locations are so important, guys. This is what I got for you. All right. Let me see if, uh, let me see if I still have this guide. Yep, I still got it. Okay, so if you want the guide, because I can't go into this in detail, guys. There's so much aspects to this. If you want the guide I recently created, this was about a week ago. I made a brand new guide on locations, Bitcoin ATM locations, how to find Bitcoin ATM locations, or what the factors are we look for with a professional call center and location finding team. I want you to comment location below. Comment location one of our team members will provide to you the guide that I crafted based on the knowledge I know in the industry, guys. Comment location below, guys, and we'll send you a copy because I just don't have enough time to cover this, right? Here we go. I want the guide is good, but you got to comment location, guys, all right? <laughs> so with that being said, guys, you want to have a location. Then you want to have cash management. So with a good location, guess what happens next? You have a lot of cash going in your machine. You can have between twenty dollars to $100,000 in cash. That's about the range I like to look at. There's some locations that do a lot more, but you can have twenty dollars to $100,000 in cash going through your machine, being deposited. What are you going to do with all that? That doesn't even fit in my pockets. I wear tight jeans, guys. So what are you going to do? So what you want to do is have a cash management system, meaning that you want to either hire somebody or you want to have a plan to handle all that cash going in your machine. It is the fourth aspect of your Bitcoin ATM business, guys. You need to think ahead for this, okay? And then the fifth aspect, because when you start dealing with a lot of cash, guess what comes? Knock, knock, knock. Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam's like, whoa, 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 Mr. Business Owner. They're like this. They're like uh, that, that dog with uh, Taco Bell. Remember back in the day? He's like, yo quiero Taco Bell. They're like, oh, you got a little dinero, huh? All right. So what you about to do with that? That's what the Uncle Sam's like. That's what IRS wants to do. That's what all those government agencies want to do. And I can say this and I can joke about this because I was in law enforcement. I was like, man, those guys, nobody likes those guys. Even the local cops are like, man, nobody likes the IRS. So let's keep it real, guys. No offense to anybody in, in employment in that field, but I want to keep my money, man. I want to spend it on food. I want to spend it on my family. So I don't want to give it to the government. So compliance, guys, you have to have a compliance plan. What does that mean? You're going through a lot of clash. You want to make sure you are diligent, ensuring you're compliant with all the laws because they're always changing. So when it comes to the Bitcoin ATM business, guys, you want to make sure you have something in place, whether it's an uh, actual lawyer, whether it's specific employees of your business, somebody or something to handle the compliance because you have to register. You have to register on the federal level. You typically have to register on the state level. And a lot of times, if you live in specific cities or counties, you have to register with them too. So dealing with all that in conjunction with your family, with your business, with your actual job, that's, it takes a lot, guys. So let's keep it real. You want to sometimes outsource that. 
All right, guys. But that's all I got for this lesson, guys. All right. So let's get to the next one. All right. So while I prep that up, remember, if you wanted one of those guides, you can comment below cash ATM. We're going to comment cash. If you want one of those Bitcoin ATM guides, comment what? BTM. And if you want the location guide, comment location because I need to get this next lesson going for you guys. All right. Uh, let's do this. Uh, do, do. All right. So let me see if I can actually share my screen. All right. Do, do. Uh, and I don't know. Here we go. Let's see if this works. All right, guys. Here we go. Comment below if you can see my screen. Let me see. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Boom. Here we go. All right. So weekly live guys, the 21st. So I want to go over another lesson for you guys. All right. So this lesson is, um, a little more closer to my heart, but it's going to be why saving alone will actually, it's going to keep you broke guys. It's not going to just keep you broke, but it's going to make you broke. And this is contrary to popular belief guys. Trust me. I understand but it's extremely important you pay attention to this lesson. I'm actually switching it up from the ATM and BTM space right now. And here's the reason why. The reason why is because at the end of the day, this is information that nobody tells you. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about you getting ahead. And that's why I'm here because we truly believe there's enough money out there for everybody, guys. There truly is. So you need to pay attention to this lesson, guys, right? So let me explain a little bit about myself before we even start. You're probably wondering, like, why do I even need to listen to you about this? So I was served in the Marine Corps, right? I joined because when I turned 18, literally three days after I turned 18, I joined the Marines. And the reason why I joined was, first of all, I wanted to serve my country. I'm going to keep it real. But here's the thing. I also knew I didn't want to go to college. I knew I probably wasn't going to get a high paying job. I knew I didn't have the skills to get to where I wanted to be. So I actually barely even graduated high school, guys. I literally graduated with a 1.6 GPA. Think about that for a second and look at where I'm at right now. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I want to show you that anything is possible. So join the Marines. I did the one job that did not have transferable skills, infantry. You're talking about teams with sniper rifles and machine guns and claymores. There's nothing that really transfers to the job market, guys, all right? So with that being said, I didn't really leave with that many skills other than discipline, which I didn't realize was so important. I actually ended up in over $50,000 in credit card debt. That should tell you something. That's revolving debt. And you're probably thinking like, how'd you get that much credit lines? Well, this is the thing. I always made the minimum payment. I'd, make, I'd pay that $57 or whatever it was every single month. So that credit card company is like, yeah, get them. Come on. We got you. We got some more for you. We're going to make you imprisoned for life. Not in prison, but in the credit card prison, in the debt prison, which is what they try to get you guys to do. I can't explain how important this is, guys. The business world tries to get you in debt to put you in shackles. They want you to drown in debt. They want you to drown because they're making money off the interest. So I was in a very bad place, living in my car, uh, ended up homeless for a while, lost contact with friends, lost contact with family. It was just not a good place. I remember just sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, how the heck am I using baby wipes to wipe my face? And you know those flashbacks you have sometimes in movies where in the military, we packed baby wipes because you can't take showers in the field, right? You're, I'm lying right next to a sniper. I'm not going to move. How many of you guys have seen the movie Shooter? I'm not going to move to take a shower, right? So you got a baby wipe. I'm thinking, man, how the heck did I end up in this situation? I was just like, this is it for me. I'm just going to be in debt for the rest of my life. And who knows? I don't know what else. Well, I actually got into law enforcement. Decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to save, 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 save. That was the first phase. And then I realized, okay, savings is not doing enough. Paid off all the debt, started making investments, made some investments in crypto. That kicked off also. Have some rental properties. Didn't go to college. Actually got accepted to UC Berkeley, but decided I made a financial decision that going to that college was actually going to set me back more. 50000 a year was just not worth it than me doing what I'm going to tell you guys today. All right? So let me break this down for you guys. 
Let me explain to you guys what the current savings amount is right now in business. So I literally just got this screenshot for you right before this live. I'm talking like 15 minutes before this live, right? So with that being said, let's see if this works. The current savings account rate in the United States, this is literally from the website was uh, bankray.com. I just Googled it, went the first result is 0.02%. 0.02, guys. Think about that for a second. 0.02%. What is that? That means for $100, you're not even going to make a dollar. You're not even going to make a fraction of a dollar. That is a joke. They're spitting in your face right now. They think you don't know better. And Chase, I love them, but 0.02, that's how they that they matched them. That should show how much they care, guys. And here's the thing. You have to have a minimum balance to even get that percentage. So you need to lock up $25,000. $25,000 to actually even get that rate. How many of you guys even have that sign? I'm like, they're just lit, sitting there and they're just probably just laughing. They're like, ha ha, these Whoa, we can't even curse on, on this anymore, guys. They're just laughing. So think about that for a second. Out of $100, that's not even $1. So what is that out of $25,000? So what else can you do with your money that they don't want you to do? They just want you to lock it up, save it up like all these other online financial gurus tell you. I'm telling you right now, these guys are dumb. They don't know what they're talking about. The only way to get ahead, guys... With inflation, because think about that for a second. Remember what I told you? You're not even making a dollar out of $100. Let me break down inflation for you guys, right? So inflation, the price of everything is increasing. Everything. I'm talking rent. I'm talking food. I'm talking grass, your groceries. I'm talking childcare. I'm talking gas. Any way for you to breathe, for you to move in this first world country, is becoming expensive for you. You know, the one thing that's not going up is your salary. It's not going up whatsoever, guys. So here's the most important aspect of this with inflation. Everything's getting more expensive. If you had that same $100 that you're not even making a dollar on in that bank account, guess what's happening with inflation? Realistically, it's about 10%. Let's keep it real. They want to say it's single digits. It's not, guys. What they do is they change the definition they're trying to be, they're trying to fool you guys. They change the definition and they remove specific things. So they'll say, hey, inflation's 8%, but it doesn't include food, gas, milk, or uh, your rent. And you're like, well, wait a second. That's everything I pay for in life. So here's the thing, guys. Out of $100, you actually are going to be worth $90 the next year in your bank account. But don't worry, you, you, you gain like six cents. Then year after that, you're looking at about $81. So every single year you are losing money, but your salary is not going up. So what is there to do? What is there to do, guys? Well, you're going to want to start a business. Here's the first reason why. Tax savings. I'm going to give you some straight up advice, guys. Everyone's so quick to say, oh, this is not tax advice. You know what, guys? This is advice I would give my family and I actually do. I'm not saying this is a tax advice, but this is what I do to save money. So when you start a business, you're able to write off expenses, guys. You're able to write expenses off. What that means is now the gas you use, the gas you use to actually go to fill up your ATM, the internet or a portion of that internet to find that location, the expense you would have had anyway, the cell phone bill, things like that, you're writing them off, meaning that it reduces the amount of money you have to pay, which means what? It increases the amount of money you're actually going to what? Keep. So you keep more money. And then you have ownership, guys, meaning that you actually own something. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick example. So if your business is making you, we'll just say $1,000 a month, which is, I mean, that's pretty good. 
which is going to be what we're looking at in the Bitcoin ATM business. So if your business is making you about $1,000 a month, guess what? You're going to be making about $12,000 a year. If you wanted to sell that business, you're going to sell it for twelve dollars to $24,000. So as you're making $1,000 extra dollars every single month, guys, guess what? Whenever you're ready to sell, you have something to sell. It's ownership that you don't get out of a job. And then you also get freedom. How many of you guys have something you're actually working for? Let's keep it real. You got something you're working for. At the end of the day, you have a reason why you're starting this business. It gives you freedom. It gives you movement. It gives you lateral ability, meaning that you can go to the beach when you want. You can spend that time with your family, your daughter, your son, your mother. It doesn't matter. It gives you freedom. There's a saying, an employee is just an employee, even just a high, price, high paid employee. What does that mean, guys? Let me ask you this. Do you ever see the, the COO of a major corporation at the beach on a weekday? No, you don't. All they do is get a shorter distance to commute and they get a better parking spot, guys. So you have ownership of yourself, your life, and you also have freedom. But it also has the ability to help you with your mindset. Because think about that for a second, guys. Your mindset is what is going to drive you. When I told you I was over $50,000 in debt, do you think I just you know, magically got out of it? No, it was a freaking mindset. Because your motivation alone, guys, is not going to save you. I'm telling you right now, your motivation is not going to save you alone. It's all about your mindset. Winners are not born. They are made, guys. If you ever listen to Kobe Bryant, what does he say? He was up every single day practicing before everyone else, while everyone else was partying. That's the reason why you're here today, guys. That's why you're on this weekly live. You know why? Because you want the information to not just survive, but you want to thrive. Let's keep it real. You want to spend that money on what you want. You want to be able to buy things. Everyone is quick to say money doesn't buy happiness. Bullshit. I'm going to tell you right now. Because when you're flying first class with your family, when you're at the beach on a weekday, when there's no one else there with your family, when you're able to pay for your parents' expenses, when you're able to pay for medical bills, when you're, ever, when you're able to pay for a family member's mortgage that's in a tough situation, that buys you happiness. So don't listen to them. The people that say that usually have no money. And the reason why you're here is because you're going to generate revenue because you have your own reason. I'm not saying go out there and buy a Lamborghini. What I'm saying is that you need to have a structured game plan, a business entity that gives you the ability to have freedom in your life, to say no when you want to, to stick by your values, to say no to the people that annoy you, to be able to avoid them, to spend on the things that are going to make you healthier, to spend on the things that make you happy. It gives you freedom, guys. That's why I like to double down on businesses that make sense. Cash ATMs made sense, right? They make sense. They're simple businesses. You just refill cash once every other week. Brandon, one of our team members, guess what? He makes over $15,000 a month. No offense, Brandon. You're, he's not the smartest guy, and I'm not the smartest guy. Gianni, man, Marine Corps veteran, was actually in law enforcement. Also, guess what? He makes about 15 to 20 something thousand dollars a month from his business. We are not the smartest people, guys. I'm telling you right now, we're not the smartest people, but we're consistent. We have discipline, the same discipline you guys have to be here and to actually pay attention to things that make you money versus be distracted with other things, guys. So the reason why we're doubling down in the BTM business, guys, is very simple. We are in the early stages of this business, guys.